And it's called the land of the brave. The whole world knows our name. One Hello and welcome to the Woke is Broke podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Stanko, and our top stories today are these. The hit rapper Ice Cube is making headlines recently. Now, if, if you're not familiar with uh, Ice Cube's musical efforts, you might remember him from hit movies such as uh, Are We There Yet? and uh, Are We Done Yet? and oh, I guess that's it. Um, but he's made headlines today because he's decided to drop out of a new Jack Black film that he was set to star in. Why? Because of vaccine mandate requirements that he was unwilling to comply with. Now I know what you're thinking. He's black. He can't do that. He, he's not allowed to do that. I mean, no, no, you, you can't be against vaccine mandates if you're black, right? But, but I know why you'd think that, but I have to remind you, um, Ice Cube did help Trump work on his platinum plan a couple of years back, which was meant to help the black community. And in the words of Joe Biden. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Right, so Ice Cube, I mean, he's against vaccine mandates, but he's not really black. He's an imaginary black. Um, and for that reason, he should be shunned. For that reason, he should be shamed. For that reason, he is a white supremacist, MAGA hat-wearing, QAnon conspiracy theorist, and we need to disregard anything that that man has to say because he's not black. But no, I think it's, I think it's important that we instead pay attention to real black people. Real black people like, I don't know, uh, once mediocre NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who's also making the headlines this week. Why? Because he compared being in the NFL, the NFL, where you're paid millions of dollars to play a game, um, to slavery. Let's check out that video. What they don't want you to understand is what's being established is a power dynamic. Before they put you on the field, teams poke and examine you, searching for any defect that might affect your performance. No boundary respected. No dignity left intact. Now, I don't know why y'all are wearing chains. That's kind of weird, but uh, all right, how about this? Whoever wants to willingly and voluntarily be paid millions and millions of dollars by me to play a child's game, uh, everyone just keep your head down if that's what you want to do, all right? Well, look at that, so you all want to do it. Well, I guess you're just a bunch of hypocritical jackasses who don't know a thing about oppression. Now, aren't you? White privilege wins again. Okay, so all kidding aside, um, Colin Kaepernick, right, an actual black person, not an imaginary black guy like Ice Cube, no, an actual black person, he's comparing working for the NFL, voluntarily working for the NFL, making millions of dollars to slavery. Okay, um, I have my own comparison here. I have my own comparison here. Uh, let's not forget uh, the millions of Uyghur Muslims in China right now who are being rounded up, forcefully sterilized, right, forced into re-education camps. Let's not forget what happens after they're let out of those, oh, I'm sorry, let out of those concentration camps, out of those re-education camps. Um, well, they're sold to factory workers and then put to work, all right? A study put out by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute entitled Uyghurs for Sale found that 82 well-known global brands had ties to factories where enslaved Uyghur Muslims were forced to work. 
Quote, in the first case study, a factory in eastern China that manufactures shoes for U.S. company Nike is equipped with watchtowers, barbed wire fences, and police guard boxes. The Uyghur workers, unlike their Han counterparts, are reportedly unable to go home for holidays. Hmm, Nike, using slave labor. Okay, uh, Colin Kaepernick. That's right, he has a contract with Nike, doesn't he? He is making millions of dollars working for a company that has its, its products, its goods produced by actual slaves, right? So if you wanna make a comparison about slavery, it seems to me that Colin Kaepernick, an actual black guy, right? Not an imaginary one, an actual black guy, has a hell of a lot more in common with those people that he betrayed in his video, rounding up black people and bidding on them at auctions, seeming that he's lining his pockets with money that was earned from slave labor. Not slaves from 300 years ago, slaves today. Slaves today. But these are the people who are racially enlightened. These are the people that, that know everything about morality. Colin Kaepernick doesn't know a damn thing about oppression. Not a damn thing, if that is the comparison that he's going to make. He wants to talk about reparations? How about giving back some of the money, that some of the blood money that he has in his pockets right now? How about paying back reparations to the Uyghur Muslims that he's benefited off of? How about those reparations? And he wants to sit there and compare, being paid millions of dollars to play a game, a voluntarily play a game, millions of dollars, to being an American slave. That is insanity. Just plain and simple, insanity. Right, and I think it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyways. If African American slaves were still alive today, they were still, if they were here today, it should go without saying that they would take Colin Kaepernick and all of the people acting in this video, they would sail them out in the middle of the ocean, they would throw them in the ocean, then they would sail away because the amount of arrogance that it takes to make that egregious, that egregious, hands down, comparison, it, it, just, it just baffles the mind. It hurts, it physically hurts me to see such a disgusting and despicable comparison like that be made. You make that comparison, you don't know a thing about oppression, you don't have the right to talk about it as far as I'm concerned. It's disgusting. Colin Kaepernick is disgusting. But again, he's a real black guy, right? And he's speaking from the pre-approved list of ideas that you're allowed to have when you're a black person. And if you don't have the, and if you have ideas that aren't on that list, then you're an imaginary black guy. You're a fake black person like Ice Cube, right? God, it's absolutely disgusting. It's friggin' disgusting. <sighs> Moving on. In other news today, um, white supremacists bearing tiki torches showed up to a Glenn Youngkin rally in Virginia, uh, only it, it turns out that they were hired by the Lincoln Project, right? And uh, here's the statement from the, the Lincoln Project justifying this despicable act. Today's demonstration was our way of reminding Virginians what happened in Charlottesville four years ago. The Republicans' party's embrace of those values and Glenn Youngkin's failure to condemn it. Right, because nothing says Republicans are racists uh, quite like having Democrats dress up as white supremacists and burn torches. Right, hey, maybe we should like burn a cross, right? That'd be totally racist of Glenn Youngkin if we did that, right? These people are out of their minds, and that's the point. That's the point, I've talked about it before, moral insanity, right? Because what far leftist ideology, um, far leftist ideology, and just leftism more generally speaking, what it's rooted in are two key fallacies, right? The first being that their self-perceived intent is completely, is completely indistinguishable from moral action and moral language, and that if they do something in which they experience feeling good. That means that what they are doing is also good, right? Meaning that a leftist can dress up as a white supremacist and burn torches, and so long as they feel justified doing it, so long as their self-perceived intent is that they are justified in doing it, and so long as they feel good doing it, that means that what they are doing is also good, right? <laughs> and uh, that, that kind of arrogance, that kind of narcissism is extraordinarily dangerous. When you have an entire group of people that believes, absolutely believes, that they are not just the good guys, but they are inherently, inherently on the side of the angels, right? Which means that whatever they say, whatever they do, it's of no consequence, right? They don't need to question the morality of their actions, no matter what they say, no matter what they do. Why? Because they're always going to be on the right at the end of the day, 
right? And so when you have an entire group of people who believe that they are absolutely and totally above reproach, that leads to some dangerous shit. Because that is the ideology that was possessed by every single awful person throughout history, right? Nobody, n nobody ever thinks that they're the bad guy. Nobody ever thinks that they're the bad guy. And it's remarkable just how little the Democratic Party has changed in 60 years' time, right? Right, 60, 70 years ago, what, you had Democrats just up as KKK members and burning crosses. Today you got the Lincoln Project sending people over to Republican rallies dressed as white supremacists and burning torches. But I guess it's different today. Why? Because they have a good reason this time around. This time they have a good reason to do with the awful things that they're doing, right? There's always a good reason. There's always a, a rationalization. There's always some sort of justification to justify the awful, terrible things that they do. They'll never think that they're the bad guy, right? They'll never stop to question what they do or what they say. They don't have to because they are inherently on the side of the angels. And anyone who disagrees with them is inherently the villain. It's as simple as that. People have absolutely no humility, no shame, and no capability of questioning their actions before they commit them or after they commit them. No capability of, of engaging in some introspection and, and analyzing their own heart. You want to know the biggest difference between the left and the right right now? Is that the right, are we perfect? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We make mistakes. But the key difference is having the humility to look in our own hearts, inspect our own hearts, inspect our own thoughts, our own decisions, and question whether what we did was right, what we did was wrong, and if it was wrong to make amends, to try and do better, to aspire to be better, to work harder, to go farther, to... to to be better people tomorrow than we were today. In the left, generally speaking, they don't have that. They don't have any use for humility. Because humility requires you to recognize that you aren't perfect, that you can make mistakes. When you have a, an entire political movement that tells people that they're right no matter what, right? That they could never make a mistake. And if something bad happens to you, it's not because they made a mistake, it's because of society or it's because of the unvaccinated, or it's because of the, the MAGA-wearing Trumpers, or it's because of QAnon conspiracy theories, or, or it's because of, you know, black, uh, fake black people, right? Black faces, but not black voices, as Sage Steele so, so aptly put it just a couple of weeks ago. That ideology is detrimental to everything, everything. And it's what we have to stand up to, it's what we have to speak out against, it's what we have to fight out, fight against. And things are coming to a real head in the state of Virginia right now. And I am, I am really hoping that Glenn Youngkin makes it, makes it tomorrow. I'm going to be watching that, uh, I'm going to be watching that election pretty closely. I hope you are too. Um, if you're the praying sort, I highly encourage you to pray on this matter. You know, I, I don't talk about my faith a lot. I mean, this isn't, this isn't a, a, a Christian show per se, but, um, yeah, I, I am a Catholic. I, I do consider myself devout, and whether you are or aren't, I mean, there's, there's no denying that we are in need of some real divine intervention right now. So even if you're not the praying sort, I highly encourage you to pray all the same, because we need all the help that we can get, and we need to be the help wherever we can, to whoever we can right now. Because if not now, when? If you're not going to get involved now, when the hours are when the hours just seem to be getting darker and darker, when else are you going to step up? When else are you going to get involved? There's a whole reason for me starting this show. I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling right now, but um, in any event, that concludes today's highlights. Uh, we will catch you tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm Joshua Stanko saying stay safe, stay informed, and uh, God bless.